everybody and in this video I'm going to show you some tips and tricks for doing good on math counts. So right here is the first thing that I want to show you and this is basically all the Pythagorean triples that you should know and these are basically just the simple Pythagorean triples. Of course there's 3, 4, 5, 5, 12, 13 and so on. So you should remember this. This one is very important. Now you can just pause the video right now and try to memorize as much as the, of these that you can. But speaking of triangles, we're going to talk about the different types of triangles that you can make. There's the 45-45-90 triangle, which does not look like that. looks like this, where... What? There's the 45-45-90 triangle that looks like this. And what the triangle has a special property is that these two sides are equal. So let's just say they have length S. And the hypotenuse is just equal to S root 2. So that's very important because I see that used very often whenever you're doing problems like square problems. Where it's like S, S, side S, and then you can find the diagonal. So it's very useful. Next, we're going to talk about a different triangle that some of you may have not seen before. And this one is the 30-60-90 triangle. And that's really ugly, so I'm going to fix it. So, let's say this side is S, and this degree is 60. This is 90, and of course, and this is 30. So, that's where the name 30-60-90 triangle comes from. And if a triangle looks like this, and it's 30, 60, 90, then this length is just equal to 2s, the hypotenuse, and this length is equal to s root 3. Now, if you want a better explanation of why this is true, and you're like, what? That does not make sense. Well, then, take a look at a equilateral triangle. We see that an equilateral triangle looks like this, where all the sides are equal to 60 degrees. So if we draw, just draw one altitude down to the bottom, then this will become a 30, 60, 90 triangle right here. The two separate triangles are both 30, 60, 90 triangles, in fact. This one, this degree is 60, and this degree is 30. Because of the fact that the, perp the altitudes bisect the angles of the equilateral triangle. Now, let's just say the side of this triangle is 2s. Then the bottom of this triangle is equal to 2s2, right? So then, therefore, since this is all 2s, and this is, these are both half, this is, this length is half of the side of this, the equilateral triangle, this is just s. And then finally, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to find out that this is s, whoops, what did I do, okay, this is s, what am I doing, this is s root 3, so that's just a basic proof of why the 30, 60, 90 triangle has lengths in the ratio of this. So that's, these are two very useful triangles when you're doing geometry, and they come up very often. Now, another geometry, another geometry cool fact, I guess, is something called, uh, well, let's just say you have a octagon. So I'm going to just draw an octagon, and that's my octagon. And the problem asks, how many diagonals can you draw with this polygon, S-sided polygon? And this polygon, of course, has eight sides. So, how do we do that? Well, one way is just to go like this. One, two, three, four, five. That's one. You start with one point, and then you keep going, and you have to keep counting. You keep counting, and then you keep doing that over and over again. But, of course, that's just dumb, and we don't want to do that. So, there's actually a formula for finding the number of diagonals you can find in an s-sided polygon. So the formula is just s times s minus 3 over 2. And if you're wondering where we got this formula from, let's just start with our first point. Let's just number the points of this 
uh, this octagon. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we see that the number of vertices is equal to the number of sides. Now, we see that, let's just start with number one, vertice one. Then we just draw lines to each of the diagonals that we can draw. And we see that there are eight minus three, because we didn't count the one, two, and eight vertices. We didn't draw diagonals to them, of course. So there's eight minus three, eight, min eight minus three diagonals for the first one. So this is the value. And then the next one, we see that it's number two. So we draw one, two, three, four, five. And we don't count the one, two, or three. So we also have eight minus three. And then the next one, let's keep drawing. We see that when we th draw a three to one, we already have drawn that diagonal. So it does not count. So we just keep drawing. One, two, three, four. So there's only four this time. Now, you can see where this is going. That proof does not actually work that well. So we're not going to do it that way. I mean, of course, you can't, there is a way to prove it that way. But we're not going to do it in this video. The actual way to do it is imagine, like we saw before, we saw that if there's S sides, it is the number of diagonals from one vertice is just s minus 3. So, what can we do with that information? Well, we can first see that there are s vertices. So we can multiply this by s times s minus 3. But we realize that all of those diagonals will overlap. So there's actually, those diagonals are counted each diagonal is counted twice. For example, when we saw before, one and th one connected to three, and then we counted again when we counted three going to one, back to one. So we have to divide everything by two, and that's how we got our formula. Now that might have been a little bit confusing, but hopefully you got the idea. Now, let's go on to the number, uh, let's go on to numbers. So, knowing powers of numbers and the squares and cubes of numbers is actually very important. For example, knowing all the powers of 2, and but powers of 2, I would recommend doing rem remembering the powers of 2 to the 1st all the way to the powers of 2 to the 12th. And don't just remember them in order. You should be able to just look at a number like 2 to 6 and immediately recognize it as 64. And, of course, 2 to the 12th is actually equal to 4,096. So, if you memorize all those powers, it's going to be really useful. Now, another thing is that I would recommend is actually memorizing all the primes from 1 to 100. And you can memorize a little bit more if you want to, but that actually means all the primes from 1 to 97. Or, otherwise, 2 to 97. So, memorizing the primes from 2 to 97 is really useful because then you won't have to keep guessing and checking whenever you're doing the problems to see if a number is prime or not. And prime numbers come up also very often in math counts problems. Now, the last thing, actually, the last thing I'm going to talk about in this video is memorizing squares. And when you memorize squares, I guess you should be able to memorize squares from 1 squared to 30 squared. And for cubes, you should be able to memorize cubes from 1 cubed to 10 cubed. Then you can also memorize like 11 cubed and 12 cubed. So actually, I'd recommend 1 cubed to 12 cubed, which also works. So that's the end of this video. And if you feel like this is not enough and like this is... This is just, basically, this is just the basics that you should be memorizing. But, of course, you should also practice a lot of problems. And a very good way to practice is on AOPS. You can take their classes, or also you can play one game, this game on it, called For the Win, which allows you to practice your speed 
so you can improve on countdown the math count countdown rounds so thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed and a part two will also come soon so be sure to look out for that thanks for watching